So the patient in this vignette has an infection with Yersinia. Yersinia is a gram-negative rod. It's non-motile, and it's one of these Enterobacteraceae that does not ferment lactose either. It's considered a facultative anaerobe, and in general, there is three species of Yersinia that produce human disease. There is Yersinia pestis, which has caused human plague in the past. There is Yersinia enterocolitica, and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. So let's look at these in a bit more detail. So Yersinia cause zoonotic infections of animals, whether they be wild animals or domestic animals. And humans are considered just an intermediate incidental host in the disease cycle of these illnesses. Yersinia pestis causes the disease known as plague, which is a fever with lymphadenitis, and that can progress to septicemia, pneumonia, um, and involvement of the meninges. Generally, humans get the disease by being bitten by fleas that have been infected um, by biting the infected animal tissue. You can also get the disease from inhaling the respiratory droplets or secretions from animals or from other humans when they sneeze and aerosolize their own droplets. Generally so, when you're thinking about the transmission of plague, it's by, by being bitten by rodent fleas um, that are infected or by being exposed to dead animal tissue or to humans who are also carrying the infection. Yersinia pestis has an unusual staining which may come up in the vignette. So it exhibits bipolar staining under a right staining and that might be something you need to know about. Otherwise, it has the same features as the Yersinia uh, bacteria itself. So it's gram-negative, non-motile. It also does not ferment lactose, although it does ferment glucose. In terms of the illness caused by Yersinia pestis, known as bubonic plague, the main characteristics of the disease are non-specific systemic symptoms that are rather flu-like, so headache, fever, myalgia, fatigue. But the characteristic thing in the vignette that you'll come across is a patient that has a swelling in a particular lymph node and then it transgresses or progresses rather to lymphadenopathy. And the lymph node is very painful and can often be edematous and red on appearance. In certain cases then the disease will progress to a septicemia or a pneumonia which can, can pretty much have a very high if not complete mortality rate unless the actual disease is treated. In terms of treatment, generally the medications for plague are streptomycin and gentamicin, um, whereas patients who have been exposed to patients with a diagnosis of the plague should also receive prophylaxis with doxycycline. Yersiniosis is a diarrheal illness that's caused by the other two species we've mentioned, Yersinia enterocolitica and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. First, let's talk about Yersinia enterocolitica. So it has a number of growth features that you should know about. It, for example, often requires calcium mediums in order to grow up human body temperature. Um, it's very commonly seen in iron overload conditions because it often depends on iron um, from other actual species in order to grow. So, for example, in hemochromatosis, or in patients who have chronic liver disease or iron overload disorders, Yersinia infections um, are more prevalent amongst these patient groups. The third feature that I'd like you to know about Yersinia enterocolitica is it's capable of growing at refrigerator temperatures, although this isn't its optimal temperature. So the diarrheal illness can be caused by infected refrigerated food and the actual bacteria can multiply in such cold conditions. So when we speak about risk factors for yersiniosis, not only is it patients with iron overload conditions, but it could be patients receiving exogenous iron through blood transfusions, or it could be patients who are exposed to undercooked, um, particularly pork products. So patients who are eating pork and haven't cooked it properly and are subject then to the bacteria within the pork multiplying. Other ways in which a patient may be exposed to Yersinia uh, enterocolitica and get Yersiniosis is to infected water that hasn't been treated. And here again, you may be exposed to the urine of different animals or rodents that carry the bacteria. In terms of the disease itself, 
Yersinia cause an enterocolitis that's characterized by a bloody diarrhea. Typically, the incubation period is a week, although it can range up to two weeks. And the patient will complain of abdominal pain. They'll have a bloody diarrhea, fever. They'll be vomiting and also nauseous. It's difficult in some ways to characterize it, but the vignette should give you um, some clear indications, perhaps in the epidemiology part of the vignette, as to what the most likely diagnosis is. So again, just look out for someone who may be in that risk group, may it be a farmer or a vet who may be exposed um, to the condition or to the actual um, mode of transmission. Sometimes patients with the disease will report a sore throat and that again may be something in the vignette that you'll need to look out for compared to other causes of diarrhea. In terms of the complications, you may get uh, systemic involvement, sepsis, a local peritonitis. So enterocolitis can actually transgress or progress rather to more serious disease. Afterwards, you may notice as well that the patient may complain of joint pain. And this is particularly prevalent in patients who are HLA B27 positive and is a cause of reactive arthritis. They may also complain of erythema nodosum. And again, you may be presented with a picture of the rash a patient who's had a bloody diarrhea and been asked to link that to the possible bacteria that may be causing the disease. Yersinia can also mimic appendicitis. So this is because it inflames the lymph nodes in that area. So patients will complain of perhaps central abdominal pain, have diarrhea, which then moves towards McBurney's point in the right uh, lower quadrant. And the patient may have rebound, they may have uh, signs of peritoneal irritation such as guarding and rigidity and it may be that they actually don't have appendicitis although that is a very legitimate differential diagnosis to consider but rather the lymph nodes in the area of the appendix have become swollen and inflamed leading to a mesenteric lymphadenitis. Treatment of enterocolitis is typically with a fluoroquinolone so one of the floxacin type drugs is used for about five days to treat the bloody diarrhea associated with enterocolitis. So that is in summary Yersinia. Just recognize that there's three species, that they have common characteristics such as being gram-negative rods that are non-motile, that are facultative anaerobic and that do not ferment lactose. Know that you'll typically see them in certain patients who have iron overload disease, who work with animals, who may have exposure to contaminated water, and then recognize the differences between bubonic plague and its complications and the enterocolitis and the mesenteric lymphadenitis associated with Yersinia enterocoliticus and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis.